It's unusual to go from flying a car with rocket engines to low tier props. That's a significant difference in gameplay, but none of this matters in the face of what I'm about to tell you. NASA claims that their new space engine can travel faster than the speed of light by 99%. Seriously, wait a minute. Before we move on, make sure to press the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell icon to never miss out on any of our latest space niche videos. In this video, we will be talking about new light speed engine by Mr. Elon Musk and NASA. If this is true, we will be able to reach Mars, which is 140 million miles distant, in just 12.5 minutes, and our nearest buddy, the moon, in a matter of seconds. Whenever it comes to future exploration, we have continually evolved and overcome any obstacles as a scientific community. Despite these accomplishments, there's always been one seemingly impossible goal that we could only imagine, light speed. We've developed a way to peer into the cosmos. We've landed a man on the moon. We've sent probes beyond our solar system, and we've accomplished all of this in just a few decades. But despite these accomplishments, there has always been one seemingly impossible task that we've only dreamed about, light speed. We can look for extra solar planets and send probes to the far reaches of space, despite the fact that the nearest gigantic neighbor, Proximal Centauri b, is 4.25 light years away. We've never been able to see the grandeur of the cosmos up close. With present tech, this would take humanity 6,300 years to get there. The painful truth is that it is all worth knowing about our universe, or so we thought, is beyond our lifespan. NASA recently stated that their new rocket engine will be capable of traveling at 99% the light speed. If this is accurate, we have entered a new era of space travel. The speed of light is the most often used unit for measuring distance in space. To be clear, the speed of light is estimated to be 299 million 792,458 meters per second, a figure that appears only imaginable in Star Wars. But if you think about it, the speed of sound also looked particularly impossible to achieve at one point. We now have a jet that can quadruple that speed, yet sound and light travel at dramatically different speeds. Space is simply too big. With current technology, reaching anything in space takes a long time. Even reaching our most neighborhood stars and planets takes a long time. We'd also have to consider fuel and how much we'd need to travel across space. That's where the issue lies. This light engine would not only have to be fast and consume a large amount of gasoline, but would also have to be able to save enough energy to survive for years. While a fuelless engine is not a totally novel concept, past attempts have been undertaken. Robert Cook, a US inventor, invented an engine that transformed centrifugal force into linear motion in the late 1970s. A British inventor named Roger Sawyer proposed them to drive in the early 2000s, suggesting that trapped microwaves might be converted into thrust. The impossible engine was given to the M-Drive because it's essentially a container with microwaves bouncing around inside it, apparently moving because of these bouncy microwaves. Nobody actually understands how it works since the explanations go beyond our current understanding of physics. It's possible that our understanding of physics is incorrect, or that putting this technology to the test would disclose previously unknown physical rules. Some research groups claim to have measured a net force generated by their devices in 2001, but the force they detected was so weak that it couldn't even move a piece of paper. For all of these would-be unpleasant people, inefficiency will become a recurring problem. Scientists have known since the prototype's birth that the inefficiency of these engines outweighs their benefits. We'd have to build a megastructure the size of a skyscraper to generate any substantial thrust in the Helix engine. However, David Burns, a NASA engineer who has been working on this topic in his own time, claims to have come up with an engine concept that could accelerate to 99% the speed of light. Amazingly true, but here's the kicker. This engine wouldn't even require propellant to accomplish this. The engine was proposed to NASA and made public on October 11, 2019. In his paper, he refers to it as the Helix engine and he goes into great detail on how this futuristic ship can be propelled into orbit using in-space engines that don't require any fuel. So, what's the deal with these new helical engines? The helical engines take advantage of a loophole in Einstein's Indian theory by speeding up a loop of ions to near light speed and then altering their velocity and mass according to relativity principles, allowing the engine to move forward without having to fire anything behind it. This is when things start to get a bit complicated. The engine may be understood by glancing at the schematic below, according to Burns. Consider putting a ring in a box 
that bounces in one direction while recoiling in the opposite. When the ring inside the box reaches the end, springing backward, the box's recoil direction is likewise changed. In normal circumstances, the box would wiggle back and forth, but because both the box and the ring are traveling at the speed of light, the ring's mass will have grown as it travels faster while bouncing back, resulting in forward momentum. While there would be no need for propellants in this engine, it would require the usage of a particle accelerator as well as ion particles. By harnessing the mass shifting phenomena at light speed, the spaceship should be able to launch into space with no fuel. Technically, because the engine is said to travel at the speed of light, this might be used to describe physics rules. The publication of David Byrne's study, on the other hand, sparked a major outcry from the whole space community. Some have speculated that the basic base of this new engine may be breaking physical rules. Others, on the other hand, claim that the engine concept is wonderful but only on paper, and that building a large enough and strong enough engine to operate is unfeasible. Both the drive and Robert Cook's engine were never properly demonstrated, and both were found to be in violation of environmental rules. The notion of conservation of momentum is a fundamental physics principle that states that a system's momentum remains constant in the absence of any physical influences. With that said, a helical engine should be impossible to build, but there's always the special relativity loophole to consider. The helical engine, unlike the other devices, uses special relativity, which asserts that when an object approaches the speed of light, it collects mass. Burns sees a helix-shaped accelerator that provides a net push in a certain direction in place of the box and ring in his illustration. The engines would then accelerate the ions in the loop of a relativistic speed before altering and changing their mass by shifting their velocities. The thrust is generated by pushing the ions back and forth in the direction of travel. The only moving parts in the engine would be the ions, which would travel along a vacuum line while being restrained by electric and magnetic fields. Although the concept has yet to be vetted and tested, many people are already speculating on whether it will be a success. There are numerous factors to consider when it comes to the NASA helical engine. The machine would have to be 200 meters long and 12 meters wide to function, which would make it unsuited for space travel. It would also have to be highly powerful, as generating a single neutron of thrust would require approximately 165 megawatts of power, which is a significant amount of work. Simply said, it's a wasteful engine that would require a frictionless space environment to reach any significant speeds. Even so, if enough time and energy were available, this machine could employ Einstein's special relativity to achieve near light speed. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see you again with more updates.